Hello everyone, my name is Lalit Soni and you are watching In Focus by Drishti IES. In this video, we will be talking about a split verdict which has been given by the Supreme Court in a case wherein they were talking about GM mustard and its approval. So when we are talking about this particular video, we will be talking about this particular event and then we will see what is genetically modified. Uh, crops and we will see what is this GM mustard. So, we will start with the news, then we will talk about the genetically modified crops, then we will see what is the story of GM mustard, then we will come to the court case, we will see the split verdict and we will see what will be the future course of action with respect to that split verdict. Okay. So, let us start, we will first see the news. Here in you will see recently the Supreme Court of India delivered a split verdict in a case concerning the approval of genetically modified mustard known as HT mustard DMH11. Okay, so DMH11 is the name of the crop variety over here. This is the name of the case which is there that is Gene Campaign and Union of India etc. But the thing is you do not have to remember this particular case. Okay. Now coming to the uh, genetically modified crops. Whenever there are certain gene which has been modified in the plant in a certain way that we get the desired result or the characteristics in that particular plant that process is called genetical modifications. Okay. Here you will see the genetic modification is a technology that involves inserting DNA into a host organism or host organism genome. Okay. So, when we are talking about DNA, you know it is a double helix structure okay. and in that particular double helix structure, we are introducing uh, another gene from outside. Okay. Let us say in this particular area, we are introducing another gene from outside and that gene is responsible for a desired trait or a particular specific trait. In that case, that is called as gene or uh, you can say genome modifications. Okay. Now, plant genetic modification entails inserting a specific stretch of DNA into the plant's genome to confer new or different desired characteristics. Here, we are talking about the desired characteristic. In a plant, what kind of characteristic we might need that there can be a high yielding uh, variety, there can be a variety which is pest resistance, herbicide res tolerance or the disease resistance. Okay. So, like uh, you can go for the varieties which are drought resistant. Okay. So, something like that we can introduce a gene which is basically there. When we are talking about the current situation in India, right now we have Bt cotton. Bacillus thuringiensis is the gene which has been used in the Bt cotton. Now, is, when we are talking about this hybrid crop over here that is Bt cotton, this is you can say approved for the commercial use. Okay. And when we are talking about the cotton, cotton is a not an edible crop. So, that is why it is allowed in India. When we are talking about the any kind of uh, crop which is suitable for the consumption, in India we do not have any genetically modified crop for the consumption of human beings. Okay? So, that is there. Other than the uh, uh, Bt cotton, we have GM mustard which is under trial. We have uh, Bt brinjal as well. Okay? So, you can know, uh, know these names. Now, story of GM mustard. When we are talking about the GM mustard, what is the story behind it? Obviously, it is a genetically modified crop. So, when we are talking about the flowers of the mustard, okay. So, in the flower of mustard, both the male as well as female genetical or you can say reproductive organs are there and that is why they do not have to rely on the insect etc. for the pollination. They are basically self-pollinating variety, okay. So, that is there. When we are talking about the GM mustard genetically modified over here, so in that the modification is done in two ways. One is that there is this Bernays gene. Okay. This Bernays gene is uh, basically gene which is introduced in that and that interferes with the pollen production and renders the plant male sterile. Okay. As I told you, there are both male as well as female reproductive organs which are present. They actually target this organ of male and they basically make it sterile and then because of which the pollen production is basically interfered. Okay. Now, what they will do is now this particular plant wherein this particular element is has been removed or you can say sterilized. Okay. Now, this remaining or the resultant plant they will be going for the cross pollination over here. Okay. And with that there will be a resultant plant and resultant plant will have a high yield. Because the gene or the you know change which we have done over here that is for the high yielding variety and that is why the resultant plant will have a high yielding variety. Okay. Here the second gene over here is that the resulting plant is crossed with the uh, fertile mustard flowers containing second that is bar star gene. Okay. The name of the gene that is bar star gene. Okay. So, now what is the function of this bar star gene is that 
that gene will block the action of the RNAs gene. Okay, so that was there in the previous plant. So ultimately, you don't have to remember or the worry about this particular process. That that is too technical. But since it is there, I have to tell you. So I told you there are two genes. One is basically Barnes. Second is your Barstar. Okay, so one is to sterilize the male reproductive organ, and then we are talking about the second one that will you can say neutralize the effect of the first one. Okay, then the resulting variety will be a high yielding variety. So that is basically your GM mustard. Now, what is the timeline when we are talking about in India? So in 2015, they have actually gone for the. Uh, there was this organization in Delhi University. They sought the approval of GM mustard from the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, that is GEAC. That is the body in India which is going for the approvals of the genetically modified plants over here. Okay, so they have actually applied for the application uh, or for the approval of the GM mustard, that is DMH11. But later in 2017. GEAC actually recommended environmental release of the GM mustard. Okay, environmental release release means that they can go for the field trial now. Okay, so for that they have actually recommended it in March 2018. Ministry of Environment they have sent it back for the reconsideration, and then in May 2022 uh, the this particular body CGMPC that is from the Delhi University urged the Environment Ministry to accept the GEAC recommendation, and in October uh, 2022 they have actually. Uh, re submitted the proposal and it was accepted by the center okay so this data again you don't have to remember the thing is the process started from 2015 and by 2022 they actually have gone for the approval okay now the thing is after the approval what happens is that the some environmentalist they go to the court and they have said that that is causing harm to the environment and with respect to that this case comes to the court okay now in that particular case the issue was whether these approvals which are given that are right or wrong Okay, in that particular issue, the Supreme Court has given a verdict, and they have gone for the split verdict. Split verdict is here because they, that is a uh, you know bench of the Supreme Court that was having two judges. One has said in favor of it, second has actually decided in uh, you know against this particular thing. Then that is why there was no consensus, and that is why we are having this particular split verdict. Okay, now coming to the verdict, what verdict has been given by the Supreme Court? Justice Vivi Nagratna. She questioned the approval, citing a lack of adequate health impact studies. So she has said that because of the health studies are not uh, provided, or you know, uh, adequate studies are not there, and that is why she has questioned it. Second thing is violation of the public trust principle. Now this principle, when we are talking about the environment litigation, the principle says that the whatever resources which we are using, that is actually a trust. Okay, the You know, previous generation as a trust, they have given it to us, and now we have to move forward to the future generations. Okay, now anything which we are doing to the environment, we cannot actually go for the you know irrational use of the environmental resources or the natural resources. We have to think about that. We have to make sure that it is not causing any kind of harm to the environment and in the future generation as well for the future generations as well. Okay, so that is the uh, rational which has been given by the Justice B B Nagratna. Saying that it is a violation of the public trust principle. When we are talking about the second judge, that is Sanjay Karol, Justice Sanjay Karol, she has uh, he has actually uh, given verdict in the favor of the approval. They, he has said that he was having some kind of scientific temper. That is why he has upheld the uh, approval, emphasizing the need for balancing scientific development with the public concerns. Okay, so he has actually favored the scientific development over here. Okay, due to the difference of opinion, the bench instructed the registry. to refer the case to the chief justice of india for the formation of a larger bench okay so that is there uh, they have actually uh, you can say give a direction for the you can say center to go for a committee for the scrutiny of such things okay so that is there now moving further what is the split verdict we will just talk about it when we are talking about any kind of bench in supreme court you know that in supreme court there are various benches uh, so these benches are temporary okay for the particular time being for the particular case they will be constituted and then they will be dissolved okay when we talk about the benches there is one kind of bench that is basically division benches then second will be your constitutional benches okay division benches are generally having two or three judges okay and the constitutions benches are having five, more than five five or more than five benches uh, judges in a bench okay so basically right now in the division bench most of the cases in the supreme court which are of uh, you know some kind of dispute these are basically referred to the division benches and the cases which are having immense importance with respect to the constitution or the law in that case they will be referred to the constitutional benches these constitutional benches are basically since they are dealing with the issue of importance over here that is that is why the number of judges are basically 5 or more than 
now coming to the division bench now when we are talking about the division bench number of judges can be odd or even if there is a you know bench which is having even judges and they do not come to a consensus they do not come to a majority in that case that will be called a split verdict okay so in this particular case also there were two judges one has given in favor one has given in against and that is why there was this split verdict now what happens next as i told you that even here also they have actually directed the registry to refer this matter to the cgi so basically what will happen is that the matter will be referred to the cgi cgi will constitute a larger bench okay and then larger bench which decide on that okay now what about the larger benches so larger bench when we are talking about the review of supreme court's own judgment in that case uh, you can say a review has to be given by a larger bench uh, than the uh, one which has given the previous judgment okay now imp uh, importance of the bench size to avoid split verdicts benches for the significant cases usually consist of odd number of judges however two judges benches are also common okay odd number of judges because in that case they will be going for a majority either for the consensus okay there will not be a split verdict okay so that is about the split verdict now moving further and the last part that is basically an mcq for you we have discussed all the aspect which was related to this particular news item uh, with respect to the split verdict in the genetically modified mustard and now there will be a, there is a question for you to you can say answer the answer in, in the comment box under which ministry does the genetic engineer appraisal committee functions here you will be seeing options agriculture and farmers welfare second is environment forest and the climate change consumer affairs and food and public distribution and none of the above so you can attempt this question answer in the comment box with that i would like to take your leave if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe have a good day thank you For more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications